Let's move on to the next question. The diagram shows an open container constructed out of 200 centimeter cube of cardboard. Okay. Uh, the vertical, the two vertical N pieces are isosceles triangles with sides of 5x, 5x, and 8x, as we can see here. Okay. The two sides pieces are rectangles of length y and width 5x. This and width 5x makes sense. Now, the open top is it is open, so it is, we don't have anything on top. It is a horizontal rectangle. Okay, great. Now, part one. We have to show y is equal to this. Okay, so how can we show y is equal to that value? So we have to find something that we have in common. So something we know here is that the the was we we use that much or that for the cardboard we use that much to form this shape. So the area of all these pieces needs to add up to this. So the total area have to be two hundred. That's the main equation. So let me find one by one and we can add this up to this value. So we can use this to derive this equation. So one by one, we have this side. How can you find this area? So obviously we can just break this down into half. Because it is a, uh, how you would call this, an isosceles triangle, this needs to be four here and four here, four x, four x, right? This is five, this will be what? We can find this by, this is 90 here. This should be found by using the Pythagoras theorem. So let's find this. That will be pretty easy. So we have 5x squared have to be 4x squared plus the value of, let's call this y squared. Let's call it z squared. We don't know the value. So z squared will be what? Will be 25x squared minus 16x squared. That should be 9x squared. So finally, z have to be 3x. This is 3x. Again, this value is the perpendicular height of the triangle. How do you find the area of a triangle? It is half time base. The base is the whole thing here, 8x, and times the perpendicular height, which is 3x. That should be 4 here, so 12x squared for the area of this triangle. Now, because we have two triangles, this and this, multiply by 2, have 24x squared. So these are the two triangles. Now, we have this side and the side in the back. So this is a rectangle and two rectangles. So two rectangles times. So we have to find the area of the rectangle. It is length times the width. Y times 5x. So here we have 10xy for the two sides of the, of the uh, rectangles. Now, we just have to add everything together to form our equation. So I hope that was kind of helpful, at least you understood how we can derive that equation. So we have 10 xy plus 24 x squared is equal to 200. Now we have 10 xy is equal to 200 minus 24 x squared. Now we can uh, simplify, what we can just, y should be 200 minus 24 x squared divided by 10. 10x obviously, 10x. So again, this you can see, this is exactly shown as required right here. So shown as required. That is part one of the question. Now part two, we have to show the volume V is given by this. Now how do you find the volume of a prism? We find the area of this side and times the length to find the volume of the prism. So volume of prism it is the area of cross surface, which is area of triangle, that is 24 x square, and times the length, which is y. That will be 24 x square multiplied by y is 200 minus 24 x square over the value of 10 x. So simplify. This and this will cancel out. Uh, we can divide by, well, let's, let's just wait at the end. So here we have 24 times 200, that should be 4800x minus 24 squared, that should be 576 for that value, right? Um, okay, so I made a mistake here. Let me um, explain. The mistake I made here was I took the area of both triangle. It should be just one of them, so I should have taken 
just the area of the cross surface is just 12, not 24. That's a very silly mistake, as you can see. So let me try that again. So this is not right, not right. So 12 times 200, that should be 24, minus 12 times 24 should be 288x cubed. Here we have x, we're missing, divide by, by 10. So finally, we confirm that v has to be 24, 10 will cancel out x minus 28.8 x cube. That is the volume of the prism. Now let's move on to part three of the question. We have to find the value of x for which v has a stationary value. Again, when this happens, we know dv by dx have to be zero. So let's find out. dv by dx have to be 240 minus three times two Point, sorry, 3 times 28.8, that should be 86.4, that should be x squared. Equate that to 0. You will have 86.4x squared is 240. Now x squared is what? 240 divided by 86.4. 2, 7 over 9. x will be, with our answer, that should be 1, 2 over 3, which is 1 times 3 is 3, plus 2 is 5, 5 over 3. So the value of x for which we have this, it will be this. Now, last one, we have to find the nature of the, of the value. We have to find d2v by dx2, so re-differentiate that again. This will become 0, become 2 times 86.4, that should be. 172.8x. But again, this is a negative value. So you would say since it is negative, we confirm that it will be a maximum value. So since it is negative, it will be a maximum value. So that will be a question in relation to differentiation.